just a just a brief update here. It's less clicky. Oh, you did it. I, I don't hear it as much. What do you hear? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> exactly. I've noticed that as you're touching those buttons, I hear a lot of clacking. Check out the start button. Oh, that's even louder. I'm sitting there at nighttime. The uh, the D-pad's a little bit louder. And then the start button, remember how loud the start button was? Yeah, it's not as bad. It's better. Not as bad. I promise you it's better. Here's the Ambernic RG35XXSP. One of the things I don't like about it is that the buttons are a little bit too loud and clicky. You can actually make these quieter by adding a couple layers of tape onto the actual PCB on the dome switch. All you gotta do is strip it down to the board and then find the contacts for the buttons and put little squares of electrical tape over them. There is standard guidance, standard internet guidance, um, SIG, <laughs> which is... Uh, Two layers of tape for the D-pad, three for the face buttons, one for the start and select. You might think like, but that was the louder one, but it's just because of the travel on the actual buttons. Yeah, not too bad. You know, if you, if, if I had actually watched enough YouTube videos of people doing it prior, uh, that I had a sense for like, here's how to avoid all the buttons falling out. And then flip this part up. Oh, I dropped a bunch of buttons. I'm a lot more pleased just with that one fix with the, uh, the SP here. It, isn't it amazing? The internet, like before, if you need to know something, you'd have to like go to the library and you have to find a book that some psychopath wrote and you'd hope that they're right. <laughs> yeah. That's what's incredible is you can make community and spread knowledge about the most minor, unimportant things. <laughs> I've been using ChatGPT a lot more for all kinds of, like, just regular tasks. Like, there was one recently where... You ever get, like, at work, like, a really big email thread? You're copied into a, a thread that's already kind of existed. And you're like, wait, how do I... And you're trying to, like, backtrack. You're trying to... Under, the, different people got brought in at different times. You're trying to understand the whole thing. Like, I, I dumped that whole thread into ChatGPT, and I'm like, tell me what they're all talking about. <laughs> it'll, <laughs> it'll break it down for you. Yeah, my my company just got approved to use Copilot, which is like the Microsoft mm. version, right? It does seem like it's very helpful for, like, even, like, with videos, you can just copy whole transcripts and be like, summarize this for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, ex yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did that with um, James Rolfe's uh, BTS video to see, like, if it picked up on how peculiar it was. It kind of did. It's like, there are many challenges in James Rolfe's room, but, um, <laughs> I, I, uh, like with code that like you ever, um, try to figure out how to script something, um, how to write a little PowerShell script or write a little like batch script or something. And you're scouring through stack overflow or through those forums or like, like, like just trying to find somebody else who has the same example. And that, like, that's an, that's an area where like the, the GPT style of search is so much better suited right. where it's like. I want to export a list of users with the following attributes. And it's like, okay, here. Um, and yet, like, it doesn't always get it right. And you got to fact check it and stuff, but it's, it gets, it's way sooner. Or like, uh, we'll often at my work will, you know, there'll be some software gap that we want to fill. Like, Hey, is there software that exists that does the following 10 things? And prior to ask, you know, talking to the, the chat bot and trying to get that answer, you'd have to, you'd like, search around for products that seem like they might do it, but a lot of them aren't like clear enough on their websites about what they do. Um, and so then you like try to ask somebody and then they're like, let's schedule a, an hour long demo. And then I'll, you'll be on my mailing list forever. Uh, no. I'm, like using it as like a consultant. Um, it's, it's very, dude, it's very powerful. I, you know, I'm not the first person to say that chat GPT is a game changer, but it's, yeah. it's crazy. Oh, yeah, it's in day to day stuff that you're just like, I have no mental power for this. Like, you're given a title and a description, but they don't fit the character limit of like the current platform you're using. So you're just like, lower this description down to this character limit and then yeah. just does it. Little time savers. You know what? That is a great segue, a beautiful segue into, into one topic I wanted to cover. Uh, this is for the filmmakers, this is for the video editors, this is for the people who want to save some time uh, in, in the video editing room. So I'm going to stick to Premiere because that's what I edit in and because I have a license and so the AI features are coming in. But have you gotten a chance to look at some of these AI features? Um, there's a few. Like, um, I'll, I'll, of course, use the speech enhance. Let's have a listen. It's a long melting process. What it sounds like now. 
It's a long melting Ooh. process. In fact, it takes ago. about three days oh. for all of the ingredients to there it is. make and melt. And I'll do the remix thing where you it takes like a music track and you like say if you bought a two and a half minute stock music, but your your video's four minutes long. You just say remix to four minutes and then it just does it for you. You don't have to like do like crossfades and cut it yourself. It just kind of does it for you. Um, and you can put in parameters too. So if you want to like be as repetitive or as uh, different as you want. So I have this little blooper reel. I've got this long song and I'm simply just gonna drag that to about the length of the thing. And it's gonna go in, analyze the clip. It's doing it super, super quickly. And it's already made cuts for me. There was some, I, I don't remember what the product was called, but in uh, at my first feature, I need to lose 10 pounds. There's, um, there's uh, John wrote a lot of the music for it, but we there was just such a need for music all over the thing that he he found something called like sound something soundscapes or some paid for thing. I think he paid like thirty bucks, and you got a bunch of stock songs that you've heard in lots of commercials before. So like my my first movie has tons of music you probably have heard before somewhere. <laughs> I remember you could size it even then you could they had composed various versions of it at various uh they, they had some kind of intelligence where you could you could size it for different um durations which was really cool um like i need a 30 second version of the song that sounds like um faithfully from journey <laughs> there's one that was like <laughs> dun, 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 dun. You know, what? there's a church song that's like that, too. I'm like, why is Faithfully showing up everywhere? Yeah, it's like, you're my savior. <laughs> He's my healer. Faithfully. <laughs> Isn't there like a Mega Man song that's kind of like that too? Is there? <laughs> <laughs> dun, 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 dun. Yeah, just that particular riff to show. You know, I guess it's sort of like you know, dun 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 dun, dun boom. Yeah, of course we've spoken in the past about sound enhance, which uh, I use fairly frequently. It's 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 interesting because um, so f for those who don't know, this is the one that I don't know exactly what it's doing, but I think to at least some degree it's reconstructing your speech. It's like deep faking you, I think, a little bit. The, the, the perfect application of it is, I have a laptop sitting in front of me right now. If this audio was recorded from about this proximity on the onboard laptop mic, you know what it would sound like, kind of echoey and crappy, but it would be perfectly audible. And if you run it through this thing, it'll you can make it sound like it was recorded on the Shure M7, you know, uh, no. or something like it. Can I make this $5 microphone sound high quality using AI? So this is the audio from the $5 microphone, and it sounds pretty bad. And here's how the new audio sounds. So this is the audio from the $5 microphone, and it sounds pretty bad. But what can you expect? I bought this from Dollar Tree. Oh, my goodness. That's not just a matter of, uh, uh, you know, cutting off certain frequencies and adding some treble. or it, 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 it's, it's not just enhancing it using the traditional tools we've always used for noise removal like cutting off the floor yeah. it's i doing... suspect it's making a transcript of what you're saying yeah and then like yeah taking yeah your tones and intonations and trying to like make you again <laughs> exactly yeah it's exhuming your corpse i've already talked at lengths about the psycho movie series you may remember my documentaries about both the original four films as well as the famous house that appeared in them. That's, of course, awesome. That was the first kind of like, yeah, and they brand it as an AI feature. And that, that's also a question, an open question for me. It was like, when is something AI and when is it just like like normal everyday technology? You know, because everybody wants to, to sell everything as AI because it's selling. Right, right. Um, 
But uh, so what inspired me to look into it more and be like, hey, what like AI features am I not using? So, of course, the slobs do all of our clips for the most part. And then with the Halloween season coming up in October and stuff, we've got like more Junts carts coming out than normal. We've got um, like some upcoming box max. So there's like a lot, a lot of new content. And I was trying to figure out like, you know, is there any way I can get some help on those too? Junts cart would be a good um, candidate for that kind of thing because, you know, it's one camera. We permit jump cuts, a jump cut being like, you know, if John's talking, it can cut to the next moment when he's talking, you know, the audio is on board. So it's not, there's no like sync sound to worry about or multiple tracks. So it's a little bit simpler of an edit, but at the same time, it's not an, like, I think it's deceptively easy looking to edit because Mm -hmm. the way that you like, um, uh, you know, try to condense time, or try to like you know achieve several ideas in one shot. There's just, like lots of little things that I do. So uh, Jason was the one who uh, said, "Hey, I'd like to try it." Obviously, he's done great shopping videos. We've already did Goodwill. It was the Grandma's Attic one, so he did like a first pass on it, and it was definitely helpful because he got an hour and a half down to twelve minutes or whatever it was. And but then I had to like he actually cut too deep. There were some like missed jokes or missed B roll or like I had to kind of you know, tease it back out a little bit. There, there was a bit with diegetic music where there was, we were mm. at a farmer's market and, and like a, some folk singers were, were playing live. And I wanted that to have a little bit more of the illusion that that was continuous music in the background. And then I wanted it to end on that too. So just like a little, little bit of finessing. Oh, the captain of show, let me go home. I got to go home. But when I, when I received this edit, I thought, well, this is what assembly edits are. Isn't this what an editor yeah. assistant does? Like, this is what people, you know, yeah, you hire somebody to to deliver something easier for you to work with, right? So there's value in that. Because with the clips, we were trying to achieve, like, we want to get it so that you're, you've, you're 95% done or 100% done would be really awesome. Yes. Um, Hand them off. Be yeah. done with it, yeah. Whereas, like, for something a little bit more artistic, it's probably a little bit harder to achieve that. So I was like, okay, that's cool. And then I thought like, but could AI <laughs> do an assembly edit for me? <laughs> could it? Is there a way? Can you save me? Because I've been, well, like I, I've just been realizing chat GPT um, benefits so much recently that I'm like, there's got to be more shortcuts in my life. There have to be. Um, <laughs> so I discovered a bunch of them. I don't know that I've made uh, use of any of these so far. So auto editing. Right. If you're a video editor and you make your living video editing and you're afraid of AI, it's like, what what feature is there out there that does the job for you? I've discovered none. There's no such thing yet. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm doubtful that there ever will be. I, I think a good analogy, Dan had made the analogy in Discord. I think a good analogy is like, yeah, AI can write music, but like it ain't the fucking same. Like, even if it's really <laughs> good, it's, it's it's simply not the same. Yeah, there's there. It lacks the human touch. A human just like has a rhythm to it, especially with editing. It's that I just I I don't think a robot will get at least right now, not in the current technology. Or like it could edit it probably, but it wouldn't edit it like Frankie would. And no. my style is what makes the thing the thing. Yes, so it's like well, could it train be trained on your editing? It's like I don't know. I don't know what it would have to learn in order to, because like I'm definitely struggling to teach human beings some of this stuff because it's it's just it's so instinctual. So it's like you know I I don't think you would edit a Jones cart the way I do. I think you'd edit it like no. EJ edits edits it right. You know yeah, and then it would be equally difficult to be like yeah. edit like EJ. Yeah um, yeah because I think I tend to be slightly looser than you. Yeah. And um, I'll probably let things play out. Same with John. Like, John is looser, too. And people are like, I like John's edit. (laughs) It's like, Uh, well, people like different styles, you know? Yeah, right. There was a, I I kept getting recommended these AI country songs. It was like, I'm trying to get a hit country song with AI. I I don't know if I was just uninitiated or what, but I was like, oh, that's, uh, let's see if it, how it did. And then the whole song was about like rampant gay sex. <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with a little kiss on my big old booty from Farmery. Yeah, we're drinking beer and we're losing clothes. Just another day chilling with the country bro. It's a throw down, ho down. You can bring the whole town, but not them hoes, just some handsome bros. We're kissing and spanking and doing some yanking. <laughs> Good Lord Almighty, I'm drunk as a skunk. Got that big fat booty wrapped around my 
Jump. Did the AI really write this? <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. I hope the AI is just like really, really man horny. <laughs> it's like I can definitely edit in your style, but it's going to be a lot gayer. <laughs> it's going to be a lot more man horny. Um, so, okay. So, but what could, you know, if, if I just wanted it to do an assembly edit, what would that look like? And the feature that's out there right now in Premiere that, that people are excited about is um, it'll transcribe all the video for you. So let's say you, you you know you shot for two hours and you have a bunch of clips. You put all your clips in your timeline, select them all, uh, say transcribe this whole thing. And you might think like, well, it, you know, isn't transcription normally used for um, uh, for subtitling and this kind of thing? But large language models, they're going to use the language for something to to automate a task. And in this case, it's you can remove all pauses, low confidence words, and filler words. You can just cut them all out. Um, which is pretty cool. I mean, I can imagine, I can imagine an application for that. And it knows, you know, ums and ahs and reallys and kind ofs and that sort of thing. I, does, I played with like a primitive version of that and it it just seemed like too claustrophobic. Yeah. Like, pe- and people noticed too. Like, why is it like, it's, it's, it's fast. <laughs> it's an unnatural. Yeah. There's something wrong. So we had shot 46 minutes at the Apple and Peach Festival for Junt's Cart. And it chopped it down to 26. And I was like, oh, that's 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 some efficiency gained. I start watching it, and it's, yeah, it just feels like manic editing. And and you can change the interval for the pause. So you can make a, a pause can be two minutes if you want it to be. So, like, if you were just rolling all day, you, you could at least remove, like, long pauses. Then there's the other concern of, like, well, what if I'm shooting B-roll and the B-roll is silent? You know, you're going to cut it. So then I have to, like, create another timeline that has all of the raw and search for that. Like at what point are you actually saving me time here? And I realize what, what it really is, EJ it's, it, this is all in service of creating shorts and TikToks and right, Instagrams right. because the, then the manic editing style actually is appropriate. And there's a lot, I, I don't think premiere has one. Maybe they do. I don't remember, but I know that a lot of other applications and third party applications are all about like, give us your long form uh, content and then we'll, recommend and create a bunch of shorts. I upload the video to video.ai. It will then give me a great title and I can just go through, I can read through all the topics, all the titles, and I basically don't even have to watch the podcast. The world of shorts and TikToks are just like, that shit's all AI, dude. And it's all- Yeah, it it does feel like it. Like even like, you know, YouTube just feeds me shorts. Most of them seem AI, like, or at least like, there was a main version of this video and the creator just threw it in some sort of AI machine to bukkake it out or whatever. What if Wolverine had Uru instead of adamantium? Well, in the MCU, Uru is a rare metal ore found exclusively in Nidavellir. It is said to be one of the oldest substances in existence as it came from the first moon in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Makes sense to me because there was a while where I was trying to edit really nice shorts for some of our clips to just memorialize um, funny moments or whatever. It's impossible to imagine Mario being like, you failed. <laughs> ah, you had failed, you f- <laughs> Couldn't even make it through the f- damn home keys. Do me a favor, put your little index fingers on the J and the K or whatever the hell it is on the keyboard and try again. Yahoo, okie dokie. Uh, and of course it, it did nothing for growing the channel in any way whatsoever. But it um, if, if that was still part of my strategy and I hadn't given up on it, I certainly wouldn't want to take the extra time after like, because we're already editing longer clips and we're already putting it, the whole thing up. Like, yeah, I could imagine a scenario where maybe I would be like, all right, just generate some shorts, pump them out there and play the lottery. See, that's really what it's about is AI allows you to output high volume, which means more time at the, you know, at the, at the lever. Remember like two years, three years ago, before, before large language models were all the rage, we were laughing about like screenrant.com having all these Facebook posts that have no, they don't seem to have any engagement at all, but then suddenly one of them will, you know, so it's, it's all, and I think like the whole world of online journalism is like that. Everything is just like, SEO, 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 play again, play again, play again. Don't stop, won't stop. Yeah. Yeah. Or it's like that thing where uh, this was before Elon Musk bought Twitter, but it was like people theorized that 80% of the people were bots. Uh, so it's I like it's solvable. I really like people get so <laughs> fucking uptight about authentication. But even I'm just saying, even if like everyone was authenticated, I'm sure there's going to be a time where 
all content, even the people who are authenticated. Just put AI and like make me make me a funny, witty Twitter person. <laughs> <laughs> sure, I'd be happy to help you be funny and and. <laughs> Twitty. Yeah, I always just say, like, um, I've seen a few new social media platforms. Like, there's this one called Fizz that's where you, like, anonymously post in at your college or whatever. And um, the way that you authenticate to that, because you're anonymous, um, you still have to, like, prove your identity, is you register with a phone number. And the phone number cannot be a, be a VoIP number. So it can't be Google, Google Voice or anything like this. Right. So there's no government ID or anything. But you have to be a human being that has, like, a cell phone a number with a cell phone carrier, right? Um, mm -hmm. it seems like a good way to battle bots. I'm, I'm not sure why people have, like why the major platforms haven't done that more yet. Uh, just to let you know, the, uh, Mega Man th song I was thinking of is a Lech Man song. <laughs> totally. <laughs> You're my savior. <laughs> it, it was killing me. I had to, I had to, I had to find it. <laughs> You already mentioned the remix music tool. It's literally just right there with like the razor tool and all those. That's that's a really easy yeah. one to use. I use that like a lot. So anytime there's I have to fill a void. I I bought a track from Premium Beat and yeah, it, it just does it. It does it pretty well. I don't have to tweak it all that much usually. There's one called Scene Edit Detection. Let's say that you had you downloaded a YouTube video and you put it into Premiere and it has cuts, right? And you want to you might want to like re-edit it. We're at the at the cut point. So you want to simply just right click it and go to scene edit detection. And Adobe Sensei is going to just sit there and figure out where all the cuts are. So you can ask it to apply a cut at each detected cut point. One I can think of was I wanted to make a short out of like a moment from Box Mac, the last year's Halloween episode. And I didn't want to go through the trouble of like going back to the original project and working with the original raw. I just wanted to take the video and make a quick short out of it. But I needed to resize every frame for portrait. So I had to like find every cut and then cut and find the next cut and cut and then resize. This thing will find those cuts on its own, cut them up for you in the timeline and then put them all in the bin as clips, oh, okay. which is kind of kind of nice. This is a third party tool, but one of the ones that makes shorts for you is called Opus. It also make like like podcast clips for you too for podcasters not the kind that we make that requires slobs but I, I think the rest for premiere haven't come out yet but are coming so one is extend this one intrigues me you know the 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 various video ai where it'll like generate some some seconds of video brown electrons did one of it's the thumbnail of you and i from the original avgn video and it like tries to make video out of it and it's fucking freaky <laughs> it's yeah like i turn into like john goodman at one point <laughs> <laughs> so you can use that kind of reliable technology to extend your clip by a few frames or by a second maybe is it anybody's edited before like sometimes you just wish you had those few extra frames to either time it with a song or uh, to get to the next moment or whatever right. without having to cover it with some other clip. Sometimes you can cheat and slow it down and nobody notices, but it's always something that's a little annoying. Apparently extend, you'll be able to do. You'll also be able to add and remove objects in the frame. So if you wanted to add oh my God. a tree next to me <laughs> over here, apparently you will be able to do that. And that would be easy for us to do right now, probably. I don't know, you know, find a PNG or something online and put it there. The idea is, yeah, you'd be able to, much like Adobe uh, Generative Fill or, or the generated, right. you know, it's it's you put in a prompt and it would add the, you know, and if it was a moving shot and the lighting was changing, it would adjust to all that. Some of that Generative Fill stuff in Photoshop is crazy. Like somebody had a photo they gave me and they're like, I, I didn't notice there was a bunch of glare in their glasses. I just circled it in Photoshop and I, typed into generative fill like remove glare and it did it perfectly like it perfectly i was like what the hell <laughs> pretty sweet could you create a thumbnail for youtube and then in the generative fill be like make this look more like a mr beast mr. thumbnail yeah mr beast i was thinking like, yeah. could you do that <laughs> make it look all plastic and uncanny yeah everything looks yeah super high key and more to come i'm i'm sure there's got to be more ways 
to realize efficiency with video editing because it is it is kind of, I mean obviously we've come a long way from Steenbecks but we live in a media environment where high output is how you do it now the audience has lower standards I, I recognize but it, it makes me think of like remember like watching film festival selections in like 2003 and they were shot on handy cams and stuff and, and then like people with the same amount of talent 15 years later have much better looking movies just because the technology leveled up it's easier to just get a consumer level camera and even just using the consumer level lenses or yeah, yeah the, things can look way better so am I out of a job potentially yes <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> <laughs>